Blog Talk Radio. It was war, it was war about a week ago They shot my man, I was with him about a week ago In my city, round the city, we should stop that Keep losing, trying to win with the get back Don't you see, don't you see where that gets us? Who's cooler, there's a body, there's a shooter There's a man without a future, now his homies out to get you And the cycle just continues if we only just remember That we stronger together We was made here to give, we was made here to love We was made here to live, yeah we stronger together We was made here to give, we was made here to love we was made here to live Now get your money, get success, and live a good life Need to put the guns down and get your mind right Get your money, get success, and live a good life You need to put the guns down and get your mind right Now won't you make something of make, 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 make peace Won't you make something of yourself Make, make peace Won't you make something of yourself Make, make, make peace Won't you make something of yourself Make, ah uh, yeah, nah, revenge ain't sweet Now when you gotta watch it back and you just can't sleep It's a lot of other things that you just could be A better man, better woman, better human Hey, 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 this is DJ Dika And Miss Vicky in the house Hello Hello listeners Hello um, old, hello new um, Hello fam, those that know us personally uh, How you doing DJ Dika? I'm blessed and highly favored, and I truly prove me that today. Man. I'm telling you, I thought, I thought, I thought we was gonna come up with another plan for a second. But uh, man, hey. I don't know why you be doubting, man. Who him? Who am I? God, you know well, that. Cause I was calling on your name and I wasn't hearing any response. But I'm here now, though. That's all that matters, you know. Hey, well, ladies you and gentlemen, you know I keep it real. Uh, you are keeping it real, and so am I, and that's why the show is called Tunnel Vision. We going to agree to disagree and let it be, because I'm here right now. You don't have nothing to worry about. But I understand why you thought it for a second. I will always, I will always uh, arise when I need to arise. How was your day? You should know that by now. How was my day? Okay, well, I'm here mm-hmm. on the show. I want you all to know uh, it's been a festive, festive week for me. And um, th- this show is my therapy, for real. <laughs> you know, hey, I, I was thinking maybe I shouldn't do it today. I'm like, oh, heck no. This is my therapy to get me through the week. You know, we need to be rejuvenated. So I need to be rejuvenated, talking about speaking real truth. But anyway, how was your and week? You never know who needs to, and you never know who needed to hear what we're talking about. Oh, thank you, Mr. You Susan. never know. Because you know how sometimes it ain't all about us. It could be about some other folks, too. You know what I mean? That's right. That's right. And that's why I had to endure. Mm -hmm. You know, weeping may endure Mm -hmm. for a night, but joy comes in the morning. So tunnel vision is somebody's joy in the morning. And, you know, God is not going to give us no more than we can bear. Uh, I'm not trying to preach today, but somebody needs to hear that today. We're going through the the COVID-19 and we don't know when it's going to be over. But the point is, we here now. It's not the end of the world. Praise God that you're able to breathe. Praise God that you're living still. Because we got some people in 2020, 2020 that lost their lives due to the COVID. We got people that lost their lives due to Black Lives Matter. And I hear the preacher voice come out. So let me just stop. Because, you know, hey. And there's some people that sick really suffering with symptoms of the of the um, virus Like it's Amen. not You know If you get it Well I don't know Because there's different case scenarios But I heard that they have some really bad cases And I, I oftentimes wonder Are the people with the really bad symptoms The ones who have existing illness Or it, it, could that happen to anybody Because I heard somebody That said they don't have an existing illness, and they came down. They believe they came down with the COVID. I don't think they have proof of it, but and that's because during the time that they got it, it wasn't when the testing was going on so frequently or easily to get get um, tested. So, but their symptoms that they endured 
were kind of uncomfortable. Like they did go through some some strong symptoms, but it wasn't as bad as some that I've heard. Like they were like they didn't have no taste buds. Like they couldn't taste their food, um, and they were like their body was aching, you know, stuff like that. Versus when I heard somebody else saying how their symptoms was, they was like pretty much calling on God. Like they was like, oh my God, am I dying? Is it the end of the world? You know what I mean? So it's like I wonder, because the one that was saying it's end of the world had a pre-existing illness. So I'm wondering, is that, you know, can that happen to somebody without a pre-existing illness? You know what I mean? Uh, well, there was conversation in the media and research stating that, um, there, you know, there have been people that have gotten COVID and have died. They were young and old, and they did not have a, a pre-existing condition, and they got COVID. So that has been discussed quite often, too. So at the end of the day, and for all you people that think it's a hoax or whatever, at the end of the day, whether you have a, a pre-existing uh, condition, whether you don't, young or old, uh, it's a possibility. Uh, it can happen. But we pray in for each and every one that they stay in good health and they use wisdom um, to cut down on the spread because part of the reason why we're still in this situation, this is just my opinion based on what I see research, is if we wear our masks, and stop making it a political issue, then we can cut down on this spreading of the corona and we can get closer to the ending or when we find a vaccine. And I'm just going to leave it there because I may upset some people. But uh, lately, I don't care. Because lately, we got to stand up. We got to speak what's right. We got to use our voice. And God has blessed me to use my voice. And I'm encouraging anybody else that may be listening stand up. This is our time. I'm going to turn it back over to Ms. Vicky. No, I was done. I was just saying, you know, that that was, uh, you know, that was a question of mine. I still question it, um, you know, but um, that I was just concerned and wondering just based on my own personal experience. Mm -hmm. Well, listen, we want you to know that we are COVID free. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we got we got proof that Miss Vicky is COVID free because she went and got tested. Uh, we got proof that Dika is COVID free because Dika uh, has been doing what the doctor has told her to do. I'm gonna make y'all laugh. It's been very difficult because I'm still in the house, ladies and gentlemen. I'm still in the house, and I'm abiding by the doctor's orders. It's very difficult, but I'm doing it. But, you know, praise God, you know, I'm alive and well. I guess next week I'll be able to share if I went out for essential reasons in any way. So for all those people out there wondering, because I know a few people are listening that know me, for all those people that's wondering, where is Dika? Dika is alive and well in her house following doctor's orders. Okay. And, this and even though I've been tested, even though I've been tested and um, I'm negative, uh, sim- negative on the test. I st- also I have no symptoms of the Praise COVID. Because some God. people, you know, you test negative and you might still feel sick, or you haven't been tested and you feel these symptoms. So I have none of those symptoms. I still feel well, the same as I did before. Well, God is good. God is good. And I just want to say, I don't know when this COVID gonna be over, but I know one thing. <laughs> I know one thing. <laughs> when it is over. I've seen movies, you know, uh, 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 movies where you be watching a movie and they went to another country and they come back and they be talking about they kiss the ground because uh, they in America. That will be the my God, huh? I am outside. I get to stay out a little longer outside of essential. I can do what I want, say what I want, and be outside and be free. I just want to give y'all a little humor. And this this is real here. Uh. We're going to move on. Uh, uh, we've done our little introduction. Uh, oh, Miss Vicky came to me earlier. Uh, we haven't done an unsung hero in a minute. Would you possibly have one? No. Um, we'll come back to it maybe before the, the show is over because I didn't okay. prepare for one. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, I have one. 
I'm not gonna call him and say him. Oh, but well, I'm go gonna, ahead. Uh, we going because I'm trying then to make no it point in me coming back. So it's no point in coming back to me. Tunnel vision. You do Tunnel yours. Vision. Tunnel vision. Tunnel vision, folks. Agree to disagree. You know, I was trying to give her her platform. That's her segment. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> anyway, I mess with Miss Vicky. We love each other. Okay. Because uh, mm-hmm. before the show is over, she's going to be on me about time, and let's hurry up and, you know, time is going. Okay. <clears throat> um, This week, it was a very fruitful week for me personally, so I'll share about that in a minute. But in society, uh, uh, first I want to say, uh, what can I say his name right now? Uh, oh, my God, it, uh, his name went away from me. Regis Spielman, thank you, thank you, Holy Spirit. Regis Spielman passed away. Um, oh, I, I thought you were going to do an unsung hero. I am. No, I'm, uh, I'm going to move on to that. Give me a minute. Uh, uh, Miss Vicky, throwing me off here. I was going to say, I know you ain't going to say Regis is the unsung hero. And what if I was? Okay. <laughs> because Regis is that's not an that. unsung hero. He is a sung person that's always it's, talked it's, about. Excuse Unsung me. hero, somebody that does not yours. recognize. I have yours. I'm just saying. I have I have. Okay. Can I get finished? Can I go through? Total vision, ladies mm-hmm. and gentlemen. Total vision. Agree mm-hmm. to disagree. Okay. I'm going, I'm just continuing with the show. Okay. So Regis Spielman passed away uh, Saturday, I do believe, or possibly Sunday. But my point is he passed away. Uh, Regis Spielman was very well known in the entertainment world, and he's in the, uh, what is it, Guinness World Records for being the uh, person to be on TV the certain amount of number of times. And I personally um, would watch his show. Uh, I would watch uh, Regis with Kelly. I also would watch when he did the game show, Want to Be a Millionaire. So I follow him quite a bit. So uh, thank you for all you've done for television and praying for your family. The next person that is very dear to my heart is for historical reasons, um, John Lewis. John Lewis was one of the freedom freedom writers. John Lewis, Representative John Lewis, otherwise known as Congressman John Lewis, was a conscience of Congress. John Lewis was there with Martin Luther King. He's a civil rights icon. He was right there with Martin Luther King. And when Martin Luther King passed away, he picked up the baton and continued it until the day he died, literally, on July 17th. So I was um, able to watch the funeral. If you haven't watched the funeral, I truly would advise you to uh, look it up on YouTube, see if it's available, because it's very inspirational, very inspirational. And I want to give a few quotes. So, John Lewis, this is a quote that he would often say, Do not get lost in a sea of despair. Do not become bitter or hostile. Be hopeful. Be optimistic. Never, ever be afraid to make some noise and get in the... Wait a minute, make sure I read it right. Be afraid to make some noise and get in good trouble. Necessary trouble. We will find a way to make a way out of no way. Good trouble. So, if you've been hearing that mm-hmm. about John Lewis, that is his little slogan, you know. And all that he did, he did it in nonviolence. And he said, "Don't be bitter when you're out there advocating and being an activist." So, I thank God that He has paved the way for many others and paved the way for myself and many other activists and act, advocates, especially during this time of Black Lives Matter. Um, I wanted to talk about that because this week in particular, as you, some of you know or don't know, um, God has given me the gift to use my voice and be change agent. I have many different names or hats, but I'll just say right now an advocate. I've been advocating for many, many, many years. But I'm telling you, this last week, I really felt that God is putting me at the table more than once this week 
with two different organizations where I was able to advocate. And it has truly stretched my advocacy to a whole nother level, making me feel like, wow, all these years I've been advocating, it don't light a candle to what I've experienced this week as I sit at the table and start a conversation, finish a conversation about the importance of systematic racism and Black Lives Matter. So I want you guys just to continue to pray for me because this ain't no joke and I'm not complaining. I'm telling you the real. I felt like when I was sitting at the table this week, I felt like I was in a modern-day freedom writer. I felt like I was in a modern-day march on Washington with John Lewis Martin Luther King. I felt like a modern day, uh, the bus boycotts for Rosa Parks. It's one thing to see it in a book. It's one thing to talk about it, ladies and gentlemen. But when you sit at the table and you're seeing it firsthand, it ain't no joke. So I just want to encourage you. This is the time to speak up. Let your voice be heard. And even though we're talking about Black Lives Matter, trying to share and let people know that systematic racism is real, uh, there's many other causes. Um, where you might have to speak up in your employment, oh, at your school. So I just wanted to share that because that's going to help us go into our topic today. And I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Vicky and see if she wants to share anything. Oh. <laughs> well, that was wonderful. And I appreciate John Lewis. Am I saying his name right? Yes, yes. I appreciate I appreciate John Lewis as well. Um. I just have a question. Yes. Is he your unsung hero? (laughs) Uh, Yes, I guess. I wasn't trying to call him my unsung hero because he was part of our subject You said you had an unsung hero. Yeah, okay, yes, 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 Vicky. Yes, Vicky. Oh, you are? Yes. He's not an unsung hero, though. Okay, well, then I'm not using him as an unsung hero then. Okay, I'm just clarifying. Okay. So I'll be well, waiting for you to share your unsung hero. Well, I already did it. I got an unsung hero. Okay, so let me tell you. Yeah. No, we didn't. You, you, you. Oh, today you do. We agreed on what an unsung hero was uh, back uh, some shows ago. But I'm gonna tell you who an unsung hero is. Well, I don't even know if that's probably politically correct. But um, I was gonna say that young man is you know, that had a chance to meet John Lewis and walk with him. Yes, yes it spoke at his point. Um, But yes. he actually kind of was already recognized. So today I'm just going to say we're just talking about African-American heroes, not unsung ones, Thank you. because that would be, Whatever it wouldn't be correct. So we're going to say that we talked about um, sung heroes today. And uh, one that has passed away and one that's up and coming. The young man that was able to, you know, um, get to know John Lewis before he passed and, you know, shared ideas and thoughts and walk with him and everything. So I thought that was really touching the young guy. I don't remember his name. Do you remember his name? No, I'll have to share next week, but he was young. Yeah, but, you we'll, know, have, we'll everybody bring it up next week. Yeah, but anyway, uh, mm-hmm. we, we had our little advocate moment, our little disagreement, agree to disagree moment. Uh, I meant to mention this two weeks ago, but I forgot, so I remember it now. Uh, what's that social media? What is it? Uh, TikTok. Okay. So this was discussed on uh, Ryan and Kelly and Ryan. Okay. So when I knew about it, I just forgot to bring it up. So on TikTok. Uh, it was teenagers, young folks. They dressing up. So I don't know if you heard about this already. They dressed up. They dressing up as old senior citizens, old folks, and going in the store to get alcohol. <laughs> and it's been working. It's been working. working. It was on TikTok. <laughs> I'm glad I was able to get you a vehicle. But oh my God. Day. These kids are so smart. We were so stupid. We didn't even think about that. When we was kids, we was asking people to go in there for us and buy it. They they ain't getting dressed. They dressed it up. I wish I could show y'all a picture. Oh, my God. These kids are a hot mess. 
and stuff like old folks that go in there and get their drink. <laughs> I can't believe that they, well, you know what? The kids look older these days. They don't look like they're aged these days. You ain't so maybe that's why they're able to get away. With. No, they was putting on wigs. I'm telling you, I wish I could see you. I'm about to send you a picture when the show is over. They was putting on wigs, <laughs> makeup, glasses, and all. They was dressed like old folks. And they was on a mission. They wasn't playing. They was like, we going to get this like alcohol in the world for me to have to ch- get you dressed and have to dress that's up. Crazy. Man, <laughs> that must be some powerful alcohol, man, because it ain't worth all that. <laughs> they if I put all, all, all that, that. I better be doing a damn play. I better be that, dressed up. Oh I don't, I don't do that too often. So for me to do all mm-hmm. that, that take work. It takes work to dress up like right. a character. Right. Man, I've exactly. done it. So and then headaches. you're paying for it. It's not even like, you know, like you, they're what? actually using their money. No, they're paying, uh, they're buying the alcohol. <laughs> and they did oh, all that. Yeah, well, hey, but that the, but the conversation was, because it was on uh, Kelly Life, uh, Kelly, right? And the other thing was, I wanted to add, okay, now everybody know now. I mean, if they don't do TikTok, they don't do social media, it's on national TV talking about it. So it so was on TikTok? What? What? That was on TikTok? Yes. But I'm saying that it was being, it's being discussed on regular TV, on talk shows. So oh, so they did it as a TikTok to... thing. Yes. But I'm telling you that oh, I now thought they was doing it to just go buy alcohol. If they doing it as a TikTok thing, I understand. No, they're that. not doing it as a TikTok thing. They're actually doing it. It's just that it came up on the TikTok. And I'm saying that for the people that don't do social media and don't know what that is, it done made it done made the airways regular TV because it done became a story. So now, if there's anybody watching TV or Ryan and Kelly, they know now that the youngsters are dressing up. Like old folks that come in their liquor store to get alcohol. So they might not be able to do that no more because it's getting out. I'm just saying. And if they still Yeah, do I want to look that up and see how far. Yeah, I yeah. want to look that up to see how far it's, when it's going. That's yeah, funny. Yeah, I just wanted to share that a couple, two weeks ago. It was out. I was just trying to make it. sense out of it. I was just yeah. trying to make sense out of it, of being part of TikTok. It just, it, it just seems. Well, I might be saying it wrong, but what I'm saying, it was on TikTok that they seen them dressing up and going to the liquor store. So they're actually getting dressed and going in the liquor store to buy alcohol. I know, okay. but I'm saying that it's, it doesn't, if they made it a TikTok video, it seems like they do, it's just a one-time thing. Like, I don't uh, know uh, if, you know, to what the, TV the combination said, they have been of doing the it for two. A while. They have been doing it for a while. So, but it might have come to an end now because it done, like I said, it done made regular TV. So you got to come up with something yeah. else to go get your alcohol. Me personally, I just say no. I don't have time. Mm-hmm. It makes me sick. Mm-hmm. Okay. It makes me a little mm-hmm. extra. Okay. I'm not saying I'm all that mm-hmm. bag of chips either. I'm just not one that do it on a regular basis. So to each his own. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's move on. Let me see if there's anything mm-hmm. else that I need to share in the media before we go into our topic. Oh, for you Beyonce fans. Beyonce fans. Uh, her visual album, she calls it, uh, Black King is out. Uh, it's a visual album. Um, it is on Disney Plus. So for you Beyonce fans, I would check it out if I were you. I think um, I'm not a Beyonce fan, but I'm not hating on her either. I think it's very creative that, you know, she came up with that to promote her her, her album in that way. So, you know, check it out on Disney Plus. All righty then. I've downloaded Disney Plus to watch Hamilton, and I just haven't canceled it yet. And then I downloaded um, uh, BT Plus. So those are two uh, streaming TV services that we have now to add to our TV watching. So let us uh, go into our topic, unless Ms. Vicky has something more to say. No, I'm good. Okay, I'm glad you could. Okay. So, we're going to continue our conversation, as I was saying earlier, uh, about uh, systematic racism and my um, advocacy act- activist, 
yeah, I call myself an advocate, but I'm telling you, last week I had to change my name to activist, okay? Man, Jesus. <clears throat> anyway, so let me get out my little notes. Tunnel Vision, we make sure that we have our information correct, so can nobody accuse us of giving. Uh, what is that our president say? No, excuse me, he don't say it. People accuse him of doing it. What the heck is it called? Uh, well, they got to use Fact Finder. It'll come to me in a minute. Uh, it's not non-troops. It's something else. Very famous. Okay. TikTok. Got to open up my it's phone. It's not that Remember famous to me. Maybe I haven't thought about it much. President has a uh, has a uh, tendency to not tell troops, and then he got people that you know can call him on his not troops. That's not good. But anyway, we're gonna move on. Okay, so going back to our conversation, um, we've been discussing Black Lives Matter and systematic racism, and that's kind of where Black Lives Matter as a whole, as a movement, has been around for a long time. Uh, but due to the murder of George Floyd, it kind of caused it to be enlightened again based on how he was murdered and the situation with police brutality uh, in our world, uh, especially when it comes to African Americans. Remember, uh, people, we at home, right? Remember, we, we you know, during the COVID, we at home. So anything is possible to happen during the show, so y'all just be patient. Like the fact that I'm trying to get to my notes on my phone. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Go. Okay, so we left off talking about what well, Miss Vicky, she had left off with talking about redlining and what it means uh, when it comes to black neighborhoods and which was illegal. So, uh, Miss Vicky, I think we had mm-hmm. to wrap up the show. So I don't know if there was any more you want to talk about with that before I go on with our notes. No. I mean, we have talked about, you know, the red line and how it led to the white flight. Okay. How the, um, how, how Caucasian slash white people had, um, you know, they had moved out of the area, which took a lot of value of the area and made the area go down. And a lot of, um, you know, a lot of the finances that they had access to, of course, they took it with them, you know. So a lot of the properties ended up being either rented, some were bought, but a lot of them were rented out. And then, you know, unfortunately, um, when you rent property, you don't take as much care of it as if, if you own it. So, you know, it affected the the property value and the way the areas looked. They kind of went downhill, you know. And, you know, um, that was shortly after, um, you know, we had became, African Americans had became free of slavery. So they hadn't been educated. A lot of people weren't educated on how to deal with those type of situations as far as taking care of property, buying, or even have an opportunity to buy property. So it was just a lot of dynamics going on at that time. Thank you very much. Dynamics. Ladies and gentlemen, Tunnel Vision, uh, Tunnel Vision fans, you, that was so profound. Miss Vicky is so deep in that area. That's why I gave oh you my God. I was with this Oh, my God. get to the I subject, to this I don't want you to talk <laughs> about me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, how, man, I gotta have a lot of movie. I'm tired of being serious. This mess is just y'all. Okay, y'all notice how she was so politically correct. You know, I gotta bring a little humor. Y'all notice how she was so politically correct when she was explaining oh, redlining in the houses. And you know, she said Caucasian, that's white. You know, okay. And then when she was talking about black, she said African American. That political work work. Okay, okay, my turn. I will be using the word black and the word white. Thank you very much. Okay. If you have a problem with that, if you have <laughs> if you have a problem with that, you know where to find me. Thank you very much. 
Okay, moving on. Well, I did on. it for educational reasons. That's why I did it. It wasn't like I, I was trying to. I wasn't kissing too. nobody, but I, I wasn't very I, I was. Oh, I was, I I was merely educating. And that's why mm-hmm. I gave you the compliment because you did very well, scholar. I'm telling you. That's why you was doing it and not me. Okay, moving on. Oh, Lord. I'm so glad we could have a giggle. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we were talking about housing, so we want to give you some um, numbers, so it's not like we just talk it off the top of our head. So when it comes to housing, according to Chris Cuomo's report that is on CNN, if you want to look it up, just type in Chris Cuomo and his systematic racism opinion, because keep in mind, they got other folks around here talking about it don't exist. What's the guy's it, name on CNN? I forgot his name, the one that did the, the um, story. That we talking about? The black guy, Chris yeah. Cuomo. No, no not, not Chris Cuomo. What? I'm not talking about Chris Cuomo. That's why I said okay, the that? guy that's okay. on CNN that actually did um, talked about the rich system, systematic racism. What's his name? I can't the one that works at CNN. Right I can't remember his name right now. Oh, my God, that him. was very – he's very key. He's the one that was talking about it. Oh, Lord. Okay, anyway, go ahead. Up. Well, no, you know, I you want you to go on and talk what you were talking about. Oh, what, man? Go Thank ahead. you. All righty, then. Okay, so we are talking about houses. So when it comes to, once again, proving that systematic racism is real, systematic racism is not about feelings and beliefs, and I'll continue to learn this when I was advocating last week. It's not about feelings and beliefs. It's about how our system is made up and how there's differences between white and the black, okay? So I just wanted to I'll paraphrase that. So that's what systematic racism is all about, and we have proof right here with this article here. So when it comes to uh, blacks and whites, where's my, no, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. When it comes to owning homes, there is a difference between blacks and whites, systematic racism. I wonder why. Blacks are less likely to own homes than whites. Did y'all hear me? Did y'all hear me? Blacks are less likely to own homes than whites. Blacks, 41.3%. And then whites, it's 71.9. A gap that has only widened since 2004. And blacks, they do not own homes. According to this story, they have to put down more money. They also, another reason why it's an issue for them to own homes, because According to these stats in this story, they got to put more money down than whites. Systematic racism is real, folks. Moving on. Well, also, they um, another reason why they own less homes is because uh, racial profiling okay. within the systematic racism. So, in other words, when they realize they that they are African American or black, because we don't. We say African American because that's what we are and that's what we are in America. But everybody's not African American and they are black. So, mm-hmm. um, once they know that it's a black person, then if they are racist, they will racial profile them. They will, you know, they won't give them a fair. Like they'll look for something, or they'll create, or they'll just push them to the side until they find somebody else who qualifies and just say that they somebody else got the house before them. I know a couple that has a podcast right now. They're African American. They are African American, but it's a black couple. And um, when they bought their first home, mm-hmm. their agent apparently was not black, and he tried to keep them from getting the house. Now, what the political, what his stance was, why his reasoning was he was trying to keep them from getting it, I don't know who all was involved in that. However, they were qualified, overqualified to purchase that home and and the area that they wanted to get it in. And he tried to stop them, and they had to go behind his back and go to the seller and give them a deposit on the home so that they could get it because he was trying to give it to somebody else. And other people that he was trying to give it to were were white. And so if you want to hear this story, all you have to do is go to his and her money. And when they talk, you look for when they purchased their first home, 
and you will hear the story on what happened step by step. But yeah, that type of stuff does go on. It's it's very very much popular. Mhm. Well, thank yep. you. Thank you for the plug. Mm-hmm. Yeah. His and her, they talk. They talk about that. Actually, actually, they interviewed a Caucasian white lady. Um, they they interviewed a white lady <laughs> who grew up in <coughs> Chicago, uh-huh. and she's an elderly lady, uh-huh. which means that she was around during the time. Um, well, her parents. She was a child, and uh-huh. her parents. Uh, um were the ones that actually was around during the time that all this stuff was happening. She kind of reaped from it coming up. Um, mm-hmm. But she she ended up writing a book about it on how they, um, what is it, they segregated, they disproportionate, mm-hmm. did a disproportionate right. that part. Um, um, with the housing market and how, you know, they set it up. It was a system that was put in place to prevent, Blacks from purchasing homes You know it was like You know back then it was real real Popular and you know even we Discussed it a little bit last Week Now it's supposed to be illegal But the problem is that they Already put the systems in place So once the systems were put in place It's very difficult to change it So if you you know that's just like the I'm going to use the, the criminal justice system as an Example that's What's just like point? somebody that's poor or don't have no money and they can't afford a lawyer, but mm-hmm. they have to use a public defender. Mm-hmm. And then you have somebody who has a lawyer. I mean, who has money who can afford a lawyer. You mm-hmm. best believe it's going to be different representation going on. Mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, you can be wrong as two left shoes and have a lawyer and have the money to pay. Matter of fact, you can be somebody with money. And, you know, they figure out a way to get you out of that situation. Or if you were if you were innocent, they can get you out of it. But you got people that's in jail right now, and they were innocent, and they, were, they made them guilty. They were charged as a guilt, guilty as charged because they didn't have proper representation. So I okay. use that as an example of the same thing, you know, with this situation. Okay. Um, this is very fruitful. Before we go on, you know, while Vicky was talking, you know, I was able to get on my computer. Is the person you wanted to talk about, Van Jones, on the CNN? He's one of the black anchors on CNN. Was that the one you were referring to? The one that actually has been talking about systematic racism. That's what I'm talking okay, about. Okay, Van Jones. Van Jones. Uh, okay. So uh, moving on, when it comes to – let me go back to my notes. Oh, oh, oh wait a minute. The phone. You there? Well, he okay, was, all right. Then. I'm here. Yeah. yeah. What would you say? When he was what? I was going to say um, – he actually had talked about it on the other day, how he was really good friends with um, John Lewis. No, that's not him. Oh, okay. I want to make sure that was maybe that's somebody else. That's not who I'm talking about. Okay. I think his name is right. Donald something. D- Don Don Lemon? Something like that? Yeah, I, I think see, that's him. I, okay, I see that up here. Okay, so I'm glad we got the right person now. Yes. Okay, so when it goes to... Thank God I love to research, so it wasn't enough for me to just put that up real quick. We want to make sure that we're accurate yes, here that's on Tunnel him, Vision. Darling. We just yep. want to make sure we're accurate here on Tunnel Vision. Well, I'm glad I got it right this week. <laughs> Man. So I was going to have a test later. Well, I mean, he seemed show. like the one that's been really talking about it. Like, he's the one that brought, I mean, that had a big, like, a whole nice little spill on a video talking about systematic racism. That's why I was like, I didn't understand why you didn't say his name. Oh, because I was just probably didn't think about it. He was Chris. probably more focused on Chris Cromwell. Oh, yeah. Chris Cromwell, yes, I was. So I'm mm-hmm. glad you know me. Goodness, man, Jesus. Anyway, moving <laughs> on. I'm like, what happened to that? I'm like, look, yeah, that ain't getting look, no love. <laughs> look, <laughs> look, maybe I didn't watch that part of the video. I don't know. But moving on. Okay. Now, 
when it comes to systematic racism as well, when it comes to owning cars. Oh my God. Okay, uh, COVID nineteen. Working at the house. I'm, I'm, you know, ain't nobody here to help me. I'm producing the show with Miss Vicky by myself, and I gotta keep uh, logging into my phone. Don't y'all hate when y'all have y'all phone, and when you put a lock on it, it keep going away, and then I gotta keep signing in. Man, and the only reason why I got that lock because Miss Vicky was like, I need to have a lock. Man, it's getting on my nerves right now. Uh, see, everybody <laughs> wants the show. Okay, where am I? At? When it comes to owning cars, most likely blacks. When they are looking at the numbers, 24% blacks um, do not own cars due to income and credit challenges. And we know that for a fact, first-hand personal experience, that is real. You know, like credit, not every black person, but, you know, for the most part, um, there's, how can I say this? Well, yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of um, blacks that are doing well financially. There's a lot of blacks who are not in debt, there are a lot of uh, blacks who are educated in that area, but it's more blacks that are not than there are of those that are. And, and a lot of that has to do changed. with, yeah, yeah a lot right. of them have, a lot of it has to do with the past, with the system that's put in place. You know, if you're spending so much time to survive, you don't even think about, Educating somebody yourself, you know what I mean. Like it's much easier now for people to do it than it was back then. We have more resources, but back in the day, the resources were not there. They barely got the resources, and then if you didn't even know anything about a resource, we have things that we're that we're um, we have buck, bucket lists that we want to accomplish as well. And some of those bucket lists is stuff that we're providing resources for things we didn't couldn't even find resources for. But you best believe in white folks had the resource you know what I'm saying like they had they knew about it ahead of time they had people that gave them the resource you know so um and then going I'm back just to saying. what we're talking about yeah uh how they um that number 24 percent do not own cars due to income and credit you know like Vicky said they have some blacks that don't have to worry about that but I feel confident that the big the number is bigger for those that are not even thinking about their credit or or raising it or anything because they're just trying to survive. I mean, I'm just speaking yeah. the truth. They're just trying to survive. They ain't even thinking about that. However, that your mm-hmm. credit is important, and you know that's why education, educating yourself on all different areas, especially your credit, and your uh, is important because your credit does affect you. When you're trying to get a house, uh, get a car, or anything, and just uh, lately, um, I've been blessed to be informed and uh, 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 advised to take my credit score a little bit more seriously. And as we speak, I'm working on that. So moving on. Um, also, according to Chris Cuomo's report, when families. When families, when the family dynamic, when it comes to the family dynamic, black families work more, 75%, than white, which is 63%, even though they earn less, as stated earlier in the numbers that we shared, making it harder for black families to afford daycare for their children. And then when it comes to education, even with the landmark cases 58 years later between Plessy versus Ferguson, separate but equal, and Brown versus the Board of Education mandated integrating in the schools. People uh, place people of color in black schools twenty three billion twenty three billion less than white schools. So we yeah, because I want to mention. I, I want to say something about the school system. Go ahead. That right there is systematic racism at its worst. The way the schools are set up. Oh, my God. I know a young lady who graduated from a high school in a predominantly black and Hispanic neighborhood. And she was a, she thought she was a a three point something, maybe like 3.2, 3.5. She thought she had that GPA. 
um, when it came time for her to transfer to the university, I mean, go to go to college from high school, they told her that she didn't have all the requirements, and her GPA wasn't up to par, and she didn't even know right away that that she didn't know on time enough so that she can make other arrangements. And unfortunately, she ended up not even going to college. Then I know a situation where a young lady was taken out of um, a a school, a high school in a um, predominantly black and Hispanic, black and brown neighborhood, and was put into a Catholic school. When she left the public school, high school, she was over a 3.0. When she got to the Catholic high school, she was behind academically because the classes that they offered at the Catholic school, they did not offer them at the school in her neighborhood, her home school. So she didn't know that she needed to go take it maybe at a junior college or something like that. Um, So... As a result, when she went to the Catholic high school, she became a D fail when she was really like an A-B student and more A's than B's when she was at the school in her neighborhood. Then um, she um, was sent back to her neighborhood school because to avoid her failing that year because she was – She was putting so much effort into trying to pass, it was just not working because it was too much she had to catch up on. It was certain um, academia, certain subject matters that she hadn't even touched on because it wasn't even offered at her school. But yet when you try to put your children in a different uh, school district that doesn't align with your neighborhood, then... um, they're not letting you in, or that yeah, they're not letting you come to the school, or you have to lie. And if you lie, we didn't even talk about that. There's a whole law that they're putting you in jail because you put your kids in another school district that has more opportunities. So then that's a and setup. You so you got to leave your child in the neighborhood that doesn't have the proper academia, which you know things that will help you to succeed in life the education, the, the the character building, all those things that you get in school, they're they're missing that opportunity. So when they become adults, then yes, of course they're gonna have all these issues. You right. know, so, so Yeah, so going go back ahead. to that point apart as far as them going to jail it's in certain states, uh, because they you know, they want their ch- child, black child we're making an emphasis on that because we're talking about systematic racism, the difference between black and white. Uh, they use somebody else's address so that their child can go to a better school, and then when you find out in certain states, they will go to jail because they're saying they're lying because they're not living there, and you they you know they feel like they got to do what they got to do. And I think last week when we were talking about. Uh, you can be Congress you can be convi- you can be criminalized in California. It's just we don't have any cases because people ain't been caught, right, or they I haven't taken it to that. Because there's a law in place that says it. There's an okay. actual law. I looked it up and I was like two fifths to be tired that they had a law that you can be arrested if you put your child in a school in another district. I could not believe it. Yeah. I'm like all these criminals out here. Yeah, because I didn't know, so thank you for the clarification, because I know it is a law, but I didn't know if it was specifically in our state, but I know it's in another state. Oh, yeah, this year. Okay, Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, moving on, but going back to the school situation, civil rights, uh, fair good Marshall, Brown versus the Board of Education, uh, civil rights leader like Martin Luther King, uh, John Lewis, fought for all this stuff for us to be able to be equal, but we're not, to be able to go to school with whites and 58 years later and we're still going through it the other thing about the school system is uh depending on what neighborhood you're living in you're gonna have the hand-me-down books but you go over there i'm just gotta be real speak the truth you go over there in the caucasian white neighborhood as miss vicky politically correct said uh they're gonna they're gonna have more money over there and they're gonna have better books uh the school buildings are gonna be a lot better than you know if you go to school in the hood Okay. But also, the um, politics about that, I just want to mention um, the part the part of the under 
the part that's not being spoken of is the fact that the reason why they're able to get those kind of materials is because the money is in that neighborhood. So everybody, it's like a exclusive, you know, area okay. where every, mm-hmm. you know, and they only want certain folk to live over there, mm-hmm. you know, but they are taxpayers and their taxpayer dollars are going towards the education over there. So it's not that the government is sending, you know, special money in those areas, but my point, but the systematic part of it is how they setting it up that they own pe- only their people is able to right. be over in those areas or a limited amount of black and brown can be there. Systematic racism is alive and well. and like They I don't want to partner up with us. <clears throat> Yeah. Those people like that said, are doing that, they don't want to partner up with us. Yes. Like we said earlier, this ain't about no feelings or our feelings being hurt or what we believe. This is real stuff, data, backing it up. One more thing before we leave. I also want to share about this report. We're going to end it right here because um, you talked about a lot of stuff. So if you want to know more, you can um, look it up. But I just wanted to add when it comes to the schools and criminal justice system. That's another system that is totally, totally systematic racism. Uh, he mentioned that when kids go to school, black and white, if a white person, child gets in trouble, according to his research and his story, they just send them to the principal's office. Okay, But if it's a black child, uh, they get to they most likely going to get suspended, expelled, and sent to juvenile hall. Systematic racism is alive in a well, and it's just not fair. So I'd be glad when the people really, some people really understand that this is alive and well and that this is an issue and it needs to stop. Also, um, uh, criminal justice, when there's talking about blacks and whites in jail or Latinos in jail, um, since this Black Lives Matter has really taken off uh, again because of George Floyd's murder. Uh, here in Long Beach, it was an article, because I live here in Long Beach, um, saying, I think it's all around, but I'm going to just say Long Beach because that's the people that did the article recently. Uh, policemen are most likely, most likely going to stop a black person. Take that to the bank. And that ain't nothing new. We already know that, but I'm just saying for it to be in uh, black and white. Ink is on another conversation. So, we have discussed uh, systematic racism quite a bit. So, uh, I hope you guys got a lot of information. And we may talk about it in the future because this situation here is not going nowhere. And we're going to come back. Uh, we're going to try to move on and talk about another social issue. Uh, let's see. Uh, Miss Vicky, is there anything you want to say before we close? No. I, well, yeah. I just wanted to close um, the subject matter on a lighter note, you know, or or a higher note. Um, even though this, all this stuff, all these hidden evils have been going on for some of us, is hidden. Some of us been knew about it. Um, they are good white people. Yes. I have a lot yes. of um I've run across a lot of um whites that are not a part of that mindset. At least yes. you know. I hope not anyway, but I it, it appears they're not. Um but the they can't they can't um th- what am I trying to say? It's not their fault that they came that they they came from such a nest. You know, that right. they were a seed from some of these people. It's not their fault that, you know, their parents or their grandparents thought that way, you know, or, you know, because some of them still have parents, a family that uh, still thinks that way. Yeah. Uh, I heard a lady, I heard a lady tell me, we discussed a lady, a Caucasian white lady that owns uh, a transitional home in the hood, own a couple of them, but she came from racist, so she's not necessarily racist, but her parents are. And because her parents were racist, like hardcore racist, you know, some of the terminology, some of her 
expression comes from them, but she don't mean no right. harm. It's like she, that's where she came from, and she may, like, express, say, oh, my father used to do this or my mother, whatever the case may be. But I'm saying that not to give excuse for anybody to say racist comments or anything like that, but I'm saying that she, you know, a lot of times white people can they can't, it's not their fault that they came from that type of family. And there are some good people out there. Everybody's not racist. Right, I agree. Everybody's I just not want racist. to add to that part, though. It's like, okay, yes, their you know, family members <laughs> were like that, and then they were raised like that, and I'll give them a pass to a certain degree. It's like, okay, you don't know? Okay. But once you know, then you have a decision to make. Are you going to continue to walk that out like your parents or your grandparents? Or are you going to make a decision to be, I'm not going to be that way? So, yes, there are um, white folks that are not racist. And even with this Black Lives Matter uh, protest going on, there have been um, whites and other races that have come along with us, and they did that in the 1960s. They did it in 92 during the riots with Rodney King. So I'm not saying that it don't exist. I'm just saying that... This situation with George Floyd's murder kind of just was like a wake-up call for some that really didn't understand and know the dynamic of our history because I'm dealing with that right now where there are people in the environments that I'm in actually coming up and saying, we really want to know. We really want to know what you guys went through because we have no clue. So this is a time for us to educate for those that really want to know who are concerned, why we feel what we feel and what we're going through. So I just wanted to even you know, put that out. Thank you for clarifying that, uh, Ms. Vicki. And by all means, Vicki and I said it last week, I'm going to say it again. We're just sharing, we're just speaking truth based on what we see as an educational awareness and empowerment tool. We're not, you know, saying we don't like this, we don't like that. That's not what we're doing. That's not what Tunnel Vision is about. We're just educating, bringing awareness and empowerment. What you do with that information is on you. So, and on that note, um, I also wanted to share, because we haven't done it in a while, so um, I wanted to share our social. Uh, um, we have three yeah. minutes. Yes, I see the clock. Thank you. What I tell y'all? Okay. What I tell y'all later? What I tell y'all earlier, listeners? She was gonna be on me about <laughs> the point. Okay. Divine Victory Ministries this is our Facebook page. Our Twitter page is DVM four eighteen, and our Instagram is Divine Victory Ministries. So in uh, our uh, email, we have two emails. One for our nonprofit slash ministry, uh, Divine Victory Productions at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. And also, for our podcast, um, Tunnel Vision 4949 at gmail.com. So, continue to listen. Uh, shoot us a text, a note. Tell your friends. And be involved as much as you can. Let your voice be heard in a positive way. The best of your ability, as John Lewis said. I have one more quote. John Lewis, and then we're going to have our music moment. Amen, amen. Uh, John Lewis, another quote. Never give up. Never give in. Never become hostile. Hate is too big of a burden to bear. I love that. And on that note, we're going to be out. You take up too much energy to hate. I'm telling you. I never really thought about that until I saw that quote. I'm like, that is real for real. Okay, here we go. We're going to go off with our song, Make Peace, Make Peace, Make Peace this week. Make Peace. It was war, it was war about a week ago They shot my man, I was with him about a week ago In my city, round the city, we should stop that Keep losing, trying to win with the get back Don't you see, don't you see where that gets us? Who's cooler, there's a body, there's a shooter There's a man without a future, now his homies out to get ya And the cycle just continues if we only just remember That we stronger together We was made here to give, we was made here to love 
We was made here to live, yeah, we stronger together. We was made here to give, we was made here to love, we was made here to live. Now get your money, get success, and live a good life. Need to put the guns down and get your mind right. Get your money, get success, and live a good life. You need to put the guns down and get your mind right. Now won't you make something of make, make peace. Won't you make something of yourself? Make, make peace. Won't you make something of yourself? Make peace. Won't you make something of yourself? Make yeah, nah, revenge ain't sweet Now when you gotta watch your back and you just can't sleep It's a lot of other things that you just could be A better man, better woman, better human being Instead of building one another, we killing up all our brothers Consoling them crying mothers They got us in front of judges They got us in orange jumpers Cuff us and put us